Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, still in the thick of the holidays. Hope everybody is having a great holiday. It is the day after Christmas when I'm recording this. I am slightly exhausted, but I am here. Um, I was going to do something kind of easy and a nice tie-in with something else that I've done already. Um, but of course, I always have to overcomplicate everything and I can't ever do anything easy. So, um, so this is, it's an easy recipe in the sense of simple ingredients, simple process. I've made it a little bit more complicated, um, which you can choose to add these things or not. Um, but without further ado, today we are making bread pudding. But we are not just making simple bread pudding because that would just be too simple and basic. Um, I'm making a bread pudding with a creme brulee base. And so both very similar in their ingredients, but you know, slightly different. So bread pudding originated in England in the 1200s. It was like a poor man's dessert to basically use up stale bread. And so they would mix eggs and you could do savory or sweet. So eggs and sugar and some egg yolks and milk or cream. And then they would just bake it in an oven, 350 degrees. And you basically have your bread pudding. Now creme brulee, which, you know, Americans said that they invented it. The French said that they invented it, you know, um, there's also versions in South America, so there's some contention around who, who was the first to the creme brulee scene. Um, but creme brulee is a little bit richer. Um, it has mostly egg yolks, um, maybe a slightly sweeter than bread pudding as far as the base texture, but you know, it's, it's pretty comparable um, and almost all heavy cream. Um, as opposed to a mixture of, of milk and heavy cream that we see in bread pudding. And also creme brulee is baked in a water bath and it is baked at a lower temperature. The thing that I really love about creme brulee is that it's so much smoother and silkier and richer than a bread pudding usually tastes. Um, and just about as easy to make. Now with bread pudding, you just kind of mix everything together, throw it on the bread, bake it in the oven. This we have to scald the cream first, um, and then we have to temper the eggs, and then we can do that process. Um, now, as with most of my things, there is a process. You can throw all this together in a day. It'll be a good bread pudding. But if you really want to take some time a little care, a little love into your bread pudding. You want to start this at least the day before so you can get a very, very full bowl bread pudding. The twist with the holiday that I'm doing is that instead of cream, we're using eggnog. Now eggnog is basically a very loose kind of custard. If you're not familiar, it's basically milk and egg yolks basically cooked to a, a very liquidy custard consistency, as you can see in here. Um, and then they add turmeric for the coloring to make it more yellow, but basically the flavor that you taste in eggnog is nutmeg. And so I like eggnog, you can only really get it in the States during the holidays, so I try to use it as much as possible when I can. Now, if you don't like eggnog, don't worry, you can substitute weight for weight in grams for heavy cream instead of eggnog if you don't want to use eggnog but i think eggnog adds a nice touch the tie-in get this the tie-in with with my prior video that we're doing today is that i'm using the kugelhof that i made that had been sitting around i let it go stale i cut it up and then let it dry out and then I soaked it in this eggnog creme brulee base. So I'm using the Kugelhof from my prior video, which has the walnuts and the dried cranberries in it. Um, but you can use regular bread, you can use brioche. I'm using about eight to 900 grams of bread, which is, 
it's about a full Kugelhoff, which I believe that was like two and a half, a little over two and a half pounds. Um, this should make a nice nine by 13 kind of pan of bread pudding. Um, but I am cooking it in ramekins today to make it super cute um, and presentable. So I'm using the Kugelhoff um, from my prior recipe, but you can use any old bread you want, plain white, sourdough, whole wheat, rye. I wouldn't go for it. Um, but I do, the thing about this bread pudding that I'm also kind of making it a little more complicated, but also giving it a little bit of love, I would say, is that I'm gonna add some toasted pecans to it, and I'm gonna add some diced apple to it. Now I thought about cranberry, but eggnog can be such a subtle flavor, I didn't wanna overpower it with cranberry. The reason why I'm adding some fruit and some pecans or some nuts to it is because I want to give it like I want to break up the texture I just don't want it to be bread and a custard base I want a little crunch from the nuts and a little toastiness and a little freshness of the apples um, so I like a little bit of fruit and nuts mixed in with my bread pudding so it's just not one basic flat one note flavor so I've toasted some pecans here in advance I've diced up a little bit of uh, Fuji apple um, and then, so the day before, what you're going to want to do is dry out your bread if your bread isn't already old and dry. So I took my Kugelhoff over here and I diced it up into basically, these are about one inch by one inch cubes or three and a quarter inch. Um, you, you might be thinking, well, this bread already has nuts and fruits in it. It does, but for the sake of this video, I'm showing you another method. I'm trying to cram as much as possible into one video as I possibly can. And the other great thing about this is if you don't want to do bread pudding, you have creme brulee, so you can make creme brulee instead of bread pudding, so you can do two for one desserts. So I've got my Kugelhoff here. Um, you don't need to use Kugelhoff, you can use any kind of bread, but I did cut this up the day before and it's been sitting out on the counter unwrapped so it can kind of dry out. Now I'm drying it out so it can soak up the liquid and the custard that I'm making here from the creme brulee base. Um, did this about 24 hours in advance I would say and let it sit out depending on how dry your bread is already. Um, I let it sit out for about 12 hours before I added the creme brulee base to it to let it soak that up. Now you can cut up your bread, make your base, throw it on the bread, throw it in the oven. It may not soak all the way to the core of the bread cube, so you might get some you know, unsoaked pieces of bread. So that's why I'm saying it's a bit of a process if you want to give it some love. You can have bread pudding in a day, but will you have really good bread pudding in a day? That's debatable. So, um, so f as far as ingredients here for what we're gonna do for our creme brulee base is that I have my eggnog here in a saucepan already. I didn't put it in a bowl to put it in the saucepan because I'm just saving myself from cleaning another dish. Um, I have 780 grams of, um, eggnog. Um, now eggnog usually comes in quarts, which I think is about two and a half pounds, 32 ounces. So one quart of eggnog is more than enough for this recipe. Um, so here's my eggnog. I've got about seven egg yolks this ends up being, but these are my egg yolks. I have 124 grams of egg yolks. I have 56 grams of a egg which is basically one whole egg. So seven egg yolks, one egg. Um, I've got a pinch of salt, which is about two grams of salt. And then I have my sugar, 195 grams of granulated sugar. So, and I also have a half of a vanilla bean. If you don't have vanilla bean, don't worry about it. You can use vanilla extract, you can skip vanilla. I just like it for an additional flavor. I'm throwing that in right now. Um, also, I have about two grams of cinnamon, just because I want to add a little bit more punch to it. And then if you don't know or you're not familiar, this is a whole nutmeg. You can use powdered. I just have whole nutmegs. 
I have a zester here basically, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little zest on the nutmeg. Now I don't want too much because it already has nutmeg in it, but I just wanted to give a little bit of kick and a little bit of fresh nutmeg in there. As you can see, I didn't really take off a lot of the nutmeg. Don't go too far, it'll taste soapy and gross if you put too much nutmeg in there, and it's not gonna be a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and add the salt to that. I'm gonna turn this on, so we're just going to scald this mixture, basically. <clears throat> Which is basically bringing it up to a quick simmer and then taking it off. All we want to do here is temper these egg yolks. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my whole egg in with the egg yolks. If you need to know how to separate eggs, hit me up. I will show you. I'm not doing it here on the video today. I believe I did it on the last video, but if you need to know, message me on the Patreon, I will show you. I'm gonna go ahead and add all my sugar to my egg yolks and my egg, and I'm just going to mix that up. See, nice and mixed, nothing crazy. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a mix too. I'm gonna crank up this heat. I'm just scalding this. It's not going to burn. We don't run the risk of doing anything crazy to it. We are going to strain this dough. We want a very smooth creme brulee batter. You don't want any of the bits and pieces of the egg. You definitely don't want that vanilla bean floating in there. You don't want any big clumps of cinnamon. You don't want any big granules of salt or anything else floating in there. So this is going to get strained. If you do not have a chinois, just make sure that you buy some sort of uh, fine, fine strainer. So I'm just bringing the temperature up here until I can see the seam coming off the top. I have my chinois ready and I have my container that that is getting strained into. And you can season this any way you want. A lot of people will throw spices and such. Um, as I said, if you don't like eggnog, just use whole grain for it. I can remember when we made pastry cream and a few other things in the lemon curd, we're cooking it over the over the top until it gets thickened. We're not doing any of that here. We're merely just going to temper the eggs and mix the mixture. So we're doing the first step basically of a pastry cream or a lemon curd, um, but we're not taking it all the way. Now if I were to cook it all the way, we would basically have a custard. Um, on in a saucepan. We're finishing basically our custard process in the oven. So very similar to everything we've done before, just another variation. Um, I've got some steam coming off. I just want to see some bubbles coming, some light boiling. They said we're just what they call scalding the cream which is just bringing it to a boil, slight simmer, um, and then we're taking it off and we're basically done with the heating process. Now, as I'm stirring this and everything, the vanilla bean is releasing the vanilla pod seeds inside of the cream mixture, and so we're gonna get a nice vanilla flavor mixed in, um, so we don't have to worry about, I'm not worrying about scraping out the, um, the vanilla beans from the pod. If you want to save the pod, you can scrape the beans out, put it in here, save the pod, put it in some sugar and make vanilla sugar, or you can put it in a like a coffee grinder and grind it up, and then you have vanilla powder, which you can also use 
for vanilla flavoring in your baking. This vanilla pod's pretty old, so I'm just going to go ahead and call it a loss and just get the vanilla beans out of the, the vanilla seeds out of the inside, and I'm just going to scrap the entire rest of the pod because it's so old. Um, we are almost there. Got steam. I see the bubbles. I don't know if my microphone's picking up the crazy noise of my um, induction burner, but it makes this kind of high pitch whining noise. So you see I got some bubbles coming up over here. We are done scalding the cream. So we are tempering our eggs. So as we've done before, we take the cream, we start mixing the eggs, and we're slowly pouring the cream into this egg yolk mixture. you ended up cooking any of your egg on accident, don't worry, we're going to strain it. Just making sure it's nice and well mixed here. So I'm going to take this chinois, my picture, pitcher, not pitcher, and then I'm just pouring this in here. creme brulee base. Now when I used to work as a pastry chef in a restaurant, I used to, my head chef required me always to have creme brulee on the menu in some flavor or variety. And I always had souffle and I always had creme brulee and the other two desserts were whatever I wanted them to be. So I would make a ton of this base and then just cover it and have it in the fridge. So. If you are making um, the bread pudding and you want to do this after you cut up the bread and make it the day before, just put plastic wrap right on top here so it doesn't form a skin or anything, and then just set it in there. But you can see some nice vanilla beans and the nutmeg and the cinnamon floating around in there. Those made it through the strainer, and this is good to go. So, flashing forward, say it's the next day. Your bread has been cubed, it's drying, and then you want to go ahead and soak it. Now, if you're cooking this in a baking dish, um, you can ignore some of these steps, but I'm showing you how I'm doing it to get the results that I got in this video that I'm going to post um, as the picture for this video. So, I'm baking my creme brulees or I'm actually gonna make some creme brulee and I'm gonna make some bread pudding, but I'm making these in these four ounce ramekins that I have. Um, I think they look nice and cute and elegant. It's a perfect portion for one person, but if you don't have ramekins, don't wanna deal with ramekins, then you can bake this in a nine by 12. Again, this whole entire recipe is made around a nine by 12 pan, assuming you're not doing ramekins. If you are doing ramekins, you may wanna scale back this recipe to half. So, <coughs> I have my cute ramekins here, and then about 12 hours, so 24 hours before we're cutting the bread, letting it sit out for 12 hours. 12 hours before we should have the creme brulee base made, and we should have our bread that's been dried. We add that base now to our bread. So this has been sitting for 12 hours. I had saran wrap over it all the way to the top portion so it could soak in. So none of the bread was kind of floating around on top like I had mashed it all down in there to make it nice and make sure that it was fully evenly coated. So you can see like this bread's been sitting in here. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. But it's been sitting in there for 12, 12 hours. So I just took now, 
if you're going with the pecans and stuff, I just took some, basically going to take some of the toasted pecans that are roughly chopped and then just throw them in the bottom. I'm going to take some of the diced apple, throw it in the bottom too. Then I'm going to take, you know, two, depending on how big your bread cubes are, I've got about five bread cubes in here. Trying not to make a mess, but I'm still kind of making a mess. About five bread cubes in here or so, depending on how big you cut them. And then you have your extra creme brulee base here. I'm just going to pour that basically over the top. Now you're going to want to have your oven preheated to 300 degrees. And we are going to, I am going to be using a water bath today. So I filled that just below the line of the lip there. Actually going to reposition that piece of bread. And then I have some extra base that I had from the day before already made. So I'm just pouring that over this one. Again, this is pre-made. I already made this. It's the same as this. I just made this yesterday. These two, however, I'm going to go ahead and just make creme brulee. So if you're making creme brulee, don't worry about the bread. Don't worry about the nuts. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just go ahead and pour it in. Now, this one's a bit of a problem because it's not the same temperature as these. So, ideally, in a perfect world, you are not making from two different batches, so I'm going to basically have to take one of these out in advance um, during the baking process. Um, but, not a problem. I, I've done this plenty of times and, and know, know what to do, but ideally, you want you know, your mixture to be about room temperature. Um, and then you're going to pour this in. Your ramekin here. And then we're going to put all these in the oven. So the next step, preheated oven to 300 degrees. And you're going to want it in a water bath. I do not suggest you add your water to this before you get it on the oven rack. There's less movement involved, so if you wait to do the water bath part and add the water to your container till after, now if you're just making this in a 9x13, skip the water bath. You're probably not going to have a bigger container to put around the 9x12, 9x13 to bake it in a water bath. It will be fine, just make sure you keep an eye on it. Um, it will be done when it's slightly jiggly in the center. Now you're like, how do I know if it's jiggly because it's got bread in it? Well, when you move it, you can see that the liquid around the bread still kind of jiggles. So if it's, you're just going to be watching it. So when I bake these ramekins, these four ounce ramekins in my oven and a water bath at 300 degrees, it took almost an hour for them to fully bake. So I would say you're going to probably want to put the 9x12 and 9x13 in, bake it for 30 minutes, and then kind of watch it. Now, if you don't have it in a water bath, it's going to heat up faster. The water slows down the heating process, and so it kind of keeps it at a lower temperature for a nice low and slow. But um, it can be done. I've made creme brulee without a water bath. I've made cheesecake without a water bath. You just have to keep an eye on it and make sure that it does not overbake. So these are going to go into our oven at 300 degrees. I'm going to put them in. I'm going to actually put this on the sheet pan 
in the oven and then I'm going to take my water that I already have and then add this two-thirds of the way up the side of the ramekin. Now if you want it to bake faster, make sure you're using warm or hot water because it's going to speed up the cooking process. If the oven has to heat up the water to then have to heat up the custard inside the ramekins, it's obviously going to take longer. If you have cold water that you're adding to these, it's going to take longer. So if you have hot water, it's probably going to take shorter. So I'm just saying, if you are baking this in an oven, just keep an eye on it. 20 to 30 minutes should be fine without over baking it, but after that, depending on the water temperature that you put that you put inside of your container it's going to have a big impact on how quickly your recipe finishes so i'm going to go ahead throw these in the oven and then when i take them out i'll show you what it looks like so we're back um you're wondering how do these uh creme brulee bread puddings look when they're done adorable this is basically, you can see the shine on the custard through the light, kind of, if I turn it a certain way, and then I'll point it up. It's perfectly cooked. It should be nice and shiny on the top, like so, your bread. I'm gonna do this and hope that it doesn't fall out, but it, I don't think it will, it don't. So these are what your bread puddings look like when they're done. Now you could technically brulee the tops of these. You might run the risk of burning the bread a little bit and that might not taste the best, um, but you can brulee the tops. I'm going to show you how to brulee a creme brulee later um, after it's cooled and everything. Um, I might do that actually in a separate video later this week and just attach it on, um, but <clears throat> Anyways, this is basically your creme brulee eggnog bread pudding with the Kugelhoff bread, which has the almonds and, but as you can see, hopefully, you've got like a nice custard in there. I'm trying to see, it's nice and rich. It's not eggy and scrambled, so you know it's like, it's well done. The bread had a very nice chance to soak in the bread pudding base, and the creme brulee base. And so the bread isn't dry, um, nor is it soggy. That's a nice, it's like nice, it reminds me a lot of French toast, honestly. Um, but nice and custardy. Like this is like the perfect consistency. Um, if you bake it too long, the eggs kind of start to scramble and so the proteins get really tight and start squeezing the moisture out. And so if you've ever eaten like overcooked like egg bake or something like that you'll like cut into it and the eggs look really scrambly and the water has separated out from the eggs that's usually when something's cooked too long or gotten too hot and so the proteins have gotten really tight and they've squeezed all the water out and so they separate but here and this everything is nice and homogenous um, you can see how, how nicely it separates, it's pulling away from the sides, so it's like one entire piece. Um, it's a very nice dessert, and so I added the nuts and the fruit to it to kind of break up some of the sweetness and give it a little extra texture layer to it. Um, it's really nice, quite nice, um, but thank you again all for your support. Hope to see you soon, I'll be back in another week with a new video. Hope everyone has a nice rest of their holiday season, and thank you all again. So we're back, the creme brulee is done. The bread pudding ones cooked quicker than the full creme brulee. Um, that is because the bread, the more custard in here is going to take a longer time to finish than something that has bread. But again, these are what the bread pudding ones look like. Nice solid.
And then this is your creme brulee here. So if you've never done creme brulee, this one's got a little more color. This is the one that I mixed the day before. This is the one that I mixed today. I normally make mine the day before and then mix it. It lets all the colors or the flavors kind of meld and get together. Plus this has a little bit of, um, of the bubbles that was made from mixing the creme brulee uh, batter, so to speak. And so if you let it sit, the bubbles die down um, and then you get a cleaner top like this one. But it doesn't really matter if there are some bubbles because again, we're gonna cover it with a light, sh light layer of sugar and then brulee it or take a blowtorch to it and, and burn the sugar. I'm not going to do that while it's warm. You wanna let your creme brulee either come to room temperature or refrigerate it and then brulee it when it's cold. Do not do it while it's hot. It kinda of makes a mess and plus you don't wanna eat a hot creme brulee. The idea of creme brulee is you have a cold cream and the warm burnt top. Um, but you can see here your creme brulee, you can kind of see it in the reflection of the mirror down in the above head camera. You can see how it's kind of jiggly. Like you want to cook it just to that. It should be just a little bit jiggly. You can't see it as much in this one, but you can still kind of see that it's jiggly. Um, if you cook it past this jiggly stage, that's when it starts to get that scrambled egg kind of consistency and it starts to break apart because it starts to cook the water out of the protein and the fat molecules and then it starts to separate and you've overcooked it and you have more of a, like a curdly kind of almost like, it's not going to be quite like um, cottage cheese or something, but it's not gonna be smooth and creamy like if you cook it to this stage. So this water is very hot, you're going to want to take a towel and then basically put the towel over your hand like this and then grab them out. Make sure the towel does not touch the hot water. If it touches the hot water, it's going to transmit the heat through the towel and you're going to burn your hand, which I have done numerous times. So make sure that you're not touching a wet towel. You will burn your hands. Also, I forgot to mention in regard to the bread, <coughs> Now, if your bread isn't super stale and if it's very soft and you're using very soft bread and you want like nice cubes like this for like basically for look and um, aesthetic like I've got here, these nice cubes, um, what you can do, well, you want to make sure that you're using a serrated bread knife to cut it because it cuts it better than just a, a chef's knife. Um, but also you can freeze the bread and then cut it with a serrated knife and you'll get these nice clean cuts, clean sides. Um, so like a little tip there if you would like to have these nice, um, otherwise if you're trying to cut a soft bread with a chef's knife, you're just going to smash it down. It's not going to look as pretty. So if you want these nice cubes of bread, either a super dry bread with a serrated knife or take the bread and freeze it and then slice it while it's partially frozen and you'll get these nice cubes. Um, I'll probably do a separate like short little video of just how to brulee the creme brulee. It's really not a big deal. Basically, you're just going to put some sugar on top of here and make sure that you move it all around so you get a nice thin layer. You don't want a thick, thick layer of sugar on there. You just want a nice thin layer on there. And then you're just going to take a blowtorch to it and it'll cook up really nicely. But I'll do that in a separate video. But for now, this is your eggnog bread pudding and your eggnog bread uh, creme brulee. So you kind of have a two for one um, recipe here. And again, if you want to just make a regular creme brulee, just substitute all of the eggnog for heavy cream and you basically have a plain um, creme brulee recipe or a plain um, bread pudding and you can basically flavor it however you want to. But thanks again, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Hope everyone's having a great holiday. Thank you for all your support and I will see you soon.